Get ready. It's fun to play a game like this, trying to maneuver a car through traffic in the least possible time. You hit another vehicle, and all it does is slow you down. It doesn't work that way when you're driving real cars. Hit a car on a real highway, and it could slow you down for good. You could be disabled or killed. So could the people riding with you, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, your parents, people riding in the other vehicle. Driving a car for real is a lot like playing a video game except it can be the game of your life. The way you play it can keep you alive, or it can cripple you, or it can cut your life short in an instant, just like that. It's been found that it takes three things to be able to operate a car properly. Number one is you have to be able to see clearly. You have to pass vision tests before you can get your permit to drive must be able to see the roadway and other vehicles around you. It's the same with that great video game you're playing. You have to be able to see what you're doing. Number two, you must have good muscular coordination to make the moves you have to make to operate a vehicle. And number three, you have to be able to use good judgment to take the right action in an emergency. With all the work being done to make vehicles safer, to make the roadway safer, and to help people be better, safer drivers, it just doesn't make sense that some people do something to themselves that makes it difficult or impossible for them to operate a vehicle properly, especially when they can cause a crippling injury and even death to themselves and others. I'm talking about what people can do to themselves and their friends when they try to drive after drinking beer, wine, whiskey, any beverage containing alcohol. Drinking beverages containing alcohol and then driving is like putting on a pair of fuzzy glasses. How'd you like to play that great video game when everything is out of focus and you can't see straight? Drinking alcoholic beverages can cause you to lose control of your muscles. You can't win the game when you can't drive the car. Drinking alcohol affects your mind, interferes with good judgment. Makes you take chances. Do stupid things that you think are smart. Makes you drunk. You can't win any game when you're not at the peak of your performance. In fact, if you drink alcoholic beverages and then drive, chances are good you'll lose. You could take somebody's life. Maybe even your own. Why does anyone drink beverages containing alcohol? 
People who drink alcoholic beverages, beer, wine, and whiskey, do so because it makes them feel relaxed. Too much alcohol causes your brain and your body to get too relaxed or confused to perform a task like driving a car. How alcohol affects you depends on several things, but the most important is how much you drink. The same amount of alcohol is contained in this 12 ounce can of beer, this five ounce glass of wine, or this one and a half ounce shot of whiskey. No matter which one you drink, it's the total amount of alcohol that enters your body that counts, and how fast you drink it. Three cans of beer contain the same amount of alcohol as three glasses of wine, or three drinks that each contain a shot of whiskey. Unlike what many people think, you can get just as drunk drinking beer or wine as you can drinking whiskey. The reason why is that the effect of the alcohol on your body is exactly the same. The alcohol goes to your stomach, then into the bloodstream. From there, it goes to your brain and the nerves that control the muscles in your eyes, your arms, and hands, and your feet, and begins to affect them. It does it in a way that is always the same, depending on what is called your body's blood alcohol concentration, or BAC level. That's a measure of the amount of alcohol in your blood and in your brain, your heart, and your other organs. The BAC level is what the police measure when they stop a driver they suspect of being drunk. Almost all states consider you drunk if your BAC level is 0.1%. To demonstrate the effects of various amounts of alcohol on driving, we've set up a special test course at the General Motors Proving Ground. We asked six young adults all over 21 years old to drive the course for us before and after drinking beverages containing alcohol. At this point, the drivers have not had anything alcoholic to drink, so their BAC levels are zero. Even though the course is tough, it can be driven successfully by drivers who are sober. But what if they had been drinking? These six young adults volunteered to help us find out. They are all college graduates and are now medical students, soon to be doctors. A recognized international expert on the problems caused by drinking and driving is on hand to supervise the test and pour drinks containing equal amounts of alcohol. To start the test, each driver is given three drinks. They have their choice of beverages, but remember, no matter what they select, each will drink the same amount of alcohol. When they go onto the course, their BAC levels are about 0.05%, and their driving is beginning to be affected. They tend to drive slower than before to try to compensate for the effect of the alcohol. These drivers, like most people, can't react as quickly or correctly in an emergency as they would have if they hadn't been drinking. The driving test continues as the drivers are given two more drinks, then return to the test course. By now, their BAC levels are approaching 0.1%. Their brains and nerves are affected noticeably by the alcohol. They lose the caution they show after three drinks and begin to drive faster again. But their movements are choppier and more exaggerated. They take longer to react to what they see and hear, especially the unexpected. When directed to turn quickly to avoid a barrier, they fail. They can't make the right decision fast enough because their judgment is impaired. They have reached the point most states use to say that a person is legally driving while intoxicated, or as you might say it, driving drunk. That level is 0.1% BAC. 
If they were out on the highway, their chances of having an accident would be at least six times greater than if they hadn't been drinking. And remember, this test is being conducted in daylight. These drivers would be having a lot more trouble at night. Finally, the test drivers are given two more drinks. This will take their BAC levels well over 0.1%, beyond the point that most states use to define drunkenness. Now their driving is seriously affected. No matter how hard they try to make complex driving moves, they can't. Their nerves and muscles just won't respond properly. The more alcohol that is consumed, the higher the BAC will be, and the worse the effect. Have eight drinks in one hour, and if you're the average 160-pound individual, your BAC level will approach 0.2%. The part of the brain that controls the muscles becomes depressed, and you will be staggering drunk. Then the part that controls emotional behavior is affected. Some people who drink that much get sleepy. Others get angry easily and may shout or cry. Anyone like this must not drive a car. Yes, we're gonna go. Let's go. If he or she insists on driving, you should stay out of the car. And your friends should stay out too. If the individual keeps on drinking, his BAC level will continue to rise. At 0.3%, he will become extremely confused and may fall asleep. At 0.4%, he may go into a coma. At 0.5%, he may be unable to breathe and could die. Like I said, people react differently to alcohol. It depends on their body weight, age, and other characteristics. But at some point, alcohol causes everyone to lose control. When that happens to the driver of a car, an accident can happen. About two million crashes every year involve drivers who have been drinking. Half of the crashes where someone was killed involved drinkers. You've seen why you can't drive a vehicle safely, when you can't see clearly, and you can't control your muscles, when you can't make good decisions. You couldn't win a video game that way. And the game of your life can't be won that way either. And there's something else. It's been found that alcohol in the body causes head and neck injuries to be more serious. What might have been a minor head injury to a person who wasn't drinking could be a severe problem and lasting injury to someone who was. That's because alcohol causes increased bleeding and swelling in your spinal cord and brain tissues when you are injured in the spine or head. That slows down the flow of blood to your brain, reducing the life-giving oxygen and nutrients your brain needs to function. This can disable you or even cause death. In fact, if you had been drinking and are in an accident, your chances of being killed are four times greater than if you hadn't been drinking. That applies to anyone in the car who's been drinking, driver or passengers. So, if you ever hear anyone say that alcohol relaxes you, thereby making it less likely to be injured in an accident, don't believe it. It just isn't so. Alcohol can be addictive. In almost every state, the law says you can't drink until you're 21, but many underage people are drinking. And at the rate this is happening, one out of 20 can become addicted to alcohol.
And even when you are 21, whether to drink or not is a choice each of us must make. But at any age, there can be no choice when it comes to drinking and then driving. Or riding in a car with a driver who has been drinking. Don't do it. Because if you do, your chances of being in a crash are greatly increased. And if you or anyone in the vehicle has been drinking, that can mean the possibility of a more serious injury or a greater possibility of death for the driver, for others in the car, friends or family, for innocent people riding in other vehicles. Just seen what can happen to you and others if you allow yourself to drink and drive or ride in a car with some driver who has been drinking. Drunken driving takes thousands of lives every year. Your generation can be different. You have control. Drinking and driving can be a dead end. It's up to you. When the time comes for you to get behind the wheel of a motor vehicle, it can be the game of your life. And that's the game you really want to win.